Here in Edinburgh, there is a youth project that's been providing for young people, like me, for an incredible 40 years. It's called Canningate Youth. They do loads of different activities here, from employability and cooking to playgroups and choir practice, they have loads of stuff in their weekly programme for young people to enjoy. It's amazing to think that they've given their support to the young people of Edinburgh since 1977. I wonder if anyone at Canningate Youth would be surprised to hear that it's 40 years old. <coughs> yeah. I'd be surprised because you wouldn't really think it would be um, 40 years old. Um, no, because I've, I've made this. They've been running clubs for children for years and I'm, not, I'm surprised yet not. <laughs> hmm, let's see if any young people know about the history of CY. Um, not much actually, I didn't... Um, you should ask her about that. Um, well, I don't know a lot about it, but I know it's really good and I know all the workers are really nice. I, I think they started it because they want like, children to have fun. Looks like these guys need a history lesson. This is the area known as the Canning Gate in the centre of Edinburgh. Way back in 1977, it looked very different from how it does now. One massive change is the Scottish Parliament building. Back then, it was a brewery. The brewery employed many people from the area and the smell of hops filled the air. Here's Graham Forbes, the founder of Canningate Youth, to tell us about how different it was back then. In my time, the Scottish Parliament wasn't. Down the road of Canningate were slums. The Canningate was basically a slum area. Scottish and Newcastle was the major employer. You could see rats quite commonly. View Craig and Dumby Dykes were, you know, not the best places in town. Um, and so there's real, real need. And the gentrification of the south side and um, the Cannon Gate was still to come. It's hard to imagine 1977 from my perspective. I know 1977 is the year that Star Wars was first released, the Apple II computer came out and punk music was on the rise. Young people were having a tough time. Here's Simon Jackwit, one of the early youth workers from Canongate Youth, to tell us about it. The context was high youth unemployment and a pretty depressive atmosphere just in terms of society. Punk music had just started in 76, so you know that was that was kind of on the rise. There was you know just quite a strong atmosphere of, of around of the young people kind of reacting against society and against what what, what they saw around them and with quite a lot of sense of, of no hope. So in that context, uh, a youth project that connected with young people who were disenfranchised, who were a bit dispossessed in some cases, who were disillusioned, made a lot of sense. The young people at the time needed a place to go. So how did Canongate Youth get started? I had been involved in, in youth work in this area for some years prior to CYP starting had had involvement with the youth club that was running in Old St Paul's. It started in Old St Paul's Church and expanded from there to Blackfriars Street. We had a shop down in Blackfriars Street which was where the project started sort of you know back in 77 78 right right at the bottom of Blackfriars Street and it was a it was a literally a shop shop front so it was a small space. This is the original Canningate Youth Building. Look how much it's changed since 1977. Graham Forbes came along uh, and transformed that small voluntary run youth club into uh, the project that we, we now see today. I was just a normal young dog collar, aged about 25, in Jeffrey Street, doing my very first job ever. And one of the things I was told to do was to run this youth project. And all we had was a, a hall and two people, one of whom was the local Arcala and the other one was a friend's wife. Short story, even shorter. By means fair or foul, I managed to get some money from both central government and um, local government to, in effect, start the Canongate Youth Project. And the aim was quite simply using what resources we had, and all we had was 
a hall, me and two volunteers, to try and meet the needs. And, um, and it worked. It was known originally as the Canongate Youth Project. It became a place that helped young people in the community. A huge amount of, of community involvement that the young people had. It was, was uh, so much giving things back to the community. It was about us saying, well, let's try and work with them and their pals in the communities that they live in. It was fairly chaotic. I mean, we were adventurous. We didn't know what we were doing. We were young and terribly keen to make a difference and did make a difference. So, I mean, we're falling out with um, the local authority and others because they were too slow. Canongate Youth Project used what's called intermediate treatment. Here's Mike Tate, another CYP youth worker from the early days. Intermediate treatment was basically, um, it was group work programmes, sitting down with groups of kid, kids who maybe, you know, the common theme was that they offended or whatever. That stuff was happening in Edinburgh, but it was happening on a city-wide basis. There's a place called Panmure House that people may or may not be aware of, where kids came from all over the city, you know, to be involved in group work programmes. Graham Forbes had this vision of doing this stuff, but doing it on a community basis. What we tried to do was to do that um, intensive group work within the context of a youth project as a whole. It was called intermediate treatment, which is a long, long forgotten thing. So within time, we had nobody in our catchment area in a listy school. And those who were in a listy school, their return home was accelerated because you had intensive group work they could return to, working not only with them, but with their families. And um, on the whole, our success rates were, were good. Young people needed a place to go to have fun. The youth club in 1978 uh, met in Old St Paul's Church Hall and effectively it was, a, it was a glorified disco or music club, if you like. And in that, uh, to begin with, it was all Northern Soul music that was played. We got big numbers involved. I mean, we used to have, we used to get 100, 120 young people along. The floor was awash with people who were twirling about and doing all their dances and all that stuff. It was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Uh, we were getting loads of kids turning up with bin bags, safety pins, and poking them in, spitting on each other, and stuff like this. And, and again, it was just, you know, the, the punks and the Northern Soul people. And it was right, you know, we'll have half a dozen records at Northern Soul, half a dozen that are punk. It was just, it was nonsense. It was brilliant, absolutely fantastic. So that, that was the initial youth club. Yeah. Canongate Youth has been around for so long and survived through many tough times. It's changed, it has to change. Everything's got to evolve and, and move on. Um, the needs and aspirations of young people change all the time. And if you don't change to, to meet those, you, you'd be failing them. Just permanently trying to adjust what we were doing to the particular needs of the kids that were coming through our doors. And things changed. So unemployment changed a big way. Um, the gay scene changed. HIV started coming on the scene. Things like that, which could sort of, you know, you're too young, you won't remember. But, um, you know, they were difficult for us. You know, young people did they have social media and all sorts of different things that you know take for granted but the issues are the same you know um, and adolescence is the same you know and the need to kick out and sort of establish your own identity and your own authority in the world remains the same somewhere along the line I mean I you know I'm convinced that you know, if young people have got access to a place where there's adults around who earn their mums and dads, and earn their teachers or their social workers and all the rest of it, and where they might get a little bit of support, a little bit of information, etc., 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 you know, that, as far as I'm concerned, that's a wonderful thing. I know there'll always be a need for that. You know, we were so involved in things like we had a, an annual gala day where everybody in this area took part. Um, yearly we used to have a public bonfire display which was... <laughs> I 
was logistically was an absolute nightmare, but the families, they just, they just adored it, you know. It looks like Canongate Youth has come a long way from the starting out as a small youth club in Old St Paul's Church. It's now a big part of young people's lives. Yeah, I would say I remember all of it. Um, I was accepted for me. School didn't really do that for me since I got bullied, so it was an entirely new um, experience for me and I just loved it. I could be myself. What do they do in Canongate Youth now? There's a lot happening here, a lot of children's work happening, we have a lot of parents, we have play work, we have youth work, we have employability work, we have a social enterprise cafe. There's no two days are ever the same here. I came and volunteered and did some work with the pop-up cafe and helped them set it up. And then they got the funding um, to kit the whole cafe out and to use it as a great project for the young people. It prepares me for writing my CV and it just builds on everything and makes my CV look bigger. The, the cafe helps young people um, get skills that obviously they can put on their CV, for example, barista skills, you know, using the coffee machine and cooking, baking, customer service, so it just helps them get things that they can put on a CV and then they can hopefully find work. The world is rapidly changing and the needs of young people are changing quickly too. So a real challenge for the organisation is being able to keep up with those changes and continue to, to generate new ideas and to put them into practice. And a really obvious example there is the Play Rangers service where it was clear now that young people needed that type of service outside in the playgrounds, in the park, and we were able to step up and do that. This is Lacey and she was the first person who ever used to come into Play Rangers, just her on her own, so just one person a lot of the time. And now we have about 40 to 50 children coming. The local residents all get to know each other. It's a great place for people to start to um, yeah, come together as a community. I think the passion remains. I think the work with young people remains. I think there's a lot of continuity. You know, obviously the name, the brand, the business model, the delivery model, uh, the, the, these are things that have changed. But I think what remains is this kind of passion for having good outcomes for children and young people and their families and the community. So there's an awful lot that hasn't changed. We're still here, which is great, you know, after 40 years. It's actually quite unusual to be still here after 40 years, but, you know, we made it. I've learned that life has changed a lot since 1977, but the idea of Canongate Youth is still the same. Today, Canongate Youth still supports the community and young people in Edinburgh. Growing up in Edinburgh today is very different from back in 1977, but there is still the need for somewhere like this. Somewhere where young people can come to have fun and get support in Edinburgh.
of love.